Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today's topic is Neuroflight and I've done quite a lot of training and I'm still training and I want to share some of the results with you because I want to get your guys' feedback and see what you think and what your theories are because this is some pretty interesting stuff. Now, if you've missed my previous video, you might say, what the hell is Neuroflight? Neuroflight is basically beta flight. It is basically beta flight. But with the PID controller completely removed and the AI is keeping your quad stable. It's controlling each motor output to keep it stable and there's no more PID controller. So it's fully dynamic and just an AI back there just knows what to do if you train it correctly. So that's what's going on. Now, I will also be uh, answering a couple questions in my previous videos. Some people's feedback, which might be a little bit incorrect. Like someone said, uh, this AI will only be as good as its simulation. That's incorrect. Uh, we'll get into that later on. And uh, also I've talked with uh, Will, which is he's a really nice guy. And it turns out he was the one that's flying. And I will discuss with you what happens or he actually knows that flip of death is a reproducible uh, thing when he does a specific thing, which we'll talk about and also towards the end of the video. And I want to hear you guys' thoughts and theories also uh, because it's um, I just I just love reading your guys' comments, especially on this topic. It's pretty interesting. All right. So what are we looking at here? Well, we're looking at these graphs and these graphs are each one second long. So we have zero seconds, 0.2 of a second, 0.4. And you get the idea here. We have yaw, pitch and roll. Okay, and then we have these lines here. So this one up top on the right is the actual PID controller in the simulation. This gives us a representation or an idea how the AI should react and hopefully even better. What happens here is basically you tell your quad to roll or move a specific way. So what it has to do is it has to bring up that blue line to the black dotted line as fast as possible and keep it there as clean and as efficient as possible with not a lot of oscillations or noise so this is the current pid controller actually doing this and here we have the ai that's trained in different amount of simulations and uh it's kind of interesting because um, let's, let's get into this. So first we're going to take a look at the, this is just one sample. I have pl plenty of more, which we're going to go over step by step right now. I'm just giving you a little overview here. So here's the PID controller and here is the 1 million steps, which is 500 simulations. As you can tell after 500 simulation, it started to get the idea of where it should be going and it's reacting pretty quickly. That's like, that's around less than 0.1 of a millisecond, which is 0.1 of a second, sorry, which is pretty good here. It's going in the right direction, and as you can tell, it's trying to make its way up, but it's just not there yet. This is after 500 uh, simulations. And the same thing for this side. As you can tell, this is the pitch axis. It's doing pretty good. And then we have the yaw. It went down, then it went back for some reason, and it started to get there. Obviously, there's more samples, so we'll, we can get a better idea of what was, what was really going on on 500 simulations. Now, 200, 2, million simula 2 million steps, sorry about that, which is 1,000 simulation gets pretty interesting look how good that is actually most of them are pretty good on the uh two million steps here which is uh pretty good because after i started exceeding the two million steps everything is exactly the same i'm just it's just the amount of simulations ran and i'll explain why this is important um if you overtrain it then you brute force it and then when you put it in a new environment it just expects to to do what it's seen before but you have to find that perfect sweet spot where it just trains it to get the idea and you don't want to overtrain it just to get the idea and then just start basing most of its actions on that correct idea on that correct reward uh because if you overtrain it just won't be it just won't do shit in the new environment because it won't know what the hell to do so you got to take that into consideration uh so two million steps here and again 1000 simulations was doing pretty darn good it was really good i mean if compared with the pit controller here this is what you're kind of supposed to see it's doing pretty good now we'll see more samples right now 3 million, I don't know what happened. I think it was drunk on 3 million or it just 3 million just started screwing up quite dramatically, very bad for some reason. And I also have a 10 million step. Now the 10 million step is the first one I started with uh, just to uh, copy his first work. Now, and again, you need to take something into consideration. The code that's currently published is not fully updated to what he has. And uh, he'll be updating it very soon, hopefully. But I'm only working on the first version, which is released now. Um, just to get a better idea of how everything is running because I do have plenty of ideas to modify the simulator slightly. For example, voltage sag. And uh, not just voltage sag. Also, we have to take into consideration with the voltage drops, which would be something like simple. Like we can just drop the KVs 
uh, as time goes on in the simulation. We'll get that down right just later on, but currently um, I am working on the first version, which is what's available currently on GitHub. I haven't gotten any of the new code. Hopefully he'll release that very soon. I am in the talks with a very nice guy, and I'll tell you what he said about his flights. So let's open a 10 million sample. This one didn't look so good. See, as you can tell, what happened? Like, this is a 10 million steps, which is 5,000 simulations, as I believe. 5,000 simulations here. And this is only 1,000 simulation. Can you see that? What was really going on here? And again, when these are tested on these graphs, they've never seen uh, this type of move before in the simulation. So that's very important because this is kind of like you switch the environment somewhat. So you can get a, it gives us a better idea. As you can tell, it had some weird hiccups, and um, maybe it was being overtrained. I don't know, but it also had some good ones. Like for the example, this one here. This was the uh, uh, five thousand simulations, which is the ten million steps here. Uh, it was this was pretty good. It does have some oscillations, but if you compare it to the PID controller up here, it's, it's almost it's pretty good. I mean, for nine hours of training here. Um, but you know, and again, the two million is still I think a little bit better. So let's go through these here. Let's go ahead and start digging through them. Uh, let's just, we're going to take just four samples of the 1 million and just take a look at it real quick. And we're going to keep the PID controller here so you can always get a better, always have an idea of how it looks. So I'm going to take the first, uh, let's take the first four here. So here's one sample. This is on the 1 million step, which is 500 simulations here. And we're just going to close, we'll just keep them open right now. So it started to, as we can tell right here, it's, it went the opposite way for a second and then it started to go overshot, but it's still getting pretty close here. The roll axis I think was the best, if I remember correctly from this, but it doesn't matter because this is really unusable here. Here it did pretty good. So the roll axis was getting trained, I think, a bit more than any other axes here. And sometimes it's kind of obvious because there's always one axis that's a little bit less developed or overdeveloped, possibly um you taught it way too much so you brute forced it so uh, i think that's what's really going on i think one axis is getting learned faster than the second axis but um still need more data but you know any of your theories are welcome down below i am ready to listen and hear you guys uh talk about anything down there so it's, yeah it's pretty damn interesting here uh so as we can tell this is the one million it's not really that interesting but for me what it gets really interesting is between one million uh, sorry, 2 million steps and 3 million steps, which is just 500, uh, 1,000 simulations and 1,500 simulations. That gets really interesting. I didn't expect this result. I was like, wow, two mi when I saw 2 million, I was like, whoa, that's pretty good. And then I started getting an idea. Maybe 10 million. This is, look at this. This is 10 million, uh, sorry, 2 million uh, steps, which is 1,500 simulations here. Uh, not all of them were perfect, not all of them were perfect, but they're, they're pretty darn good as you can tell. And again, this is the PID controller here. As you can tell, it, it's acting pretty fast within 2 milliseconds, uh, 0.2, I think this is 200 milliseconds, isn't it? 0.2? Anyways, it's, it's reacting faster than 0.1 of a millisecond, we can say 0.1 of a millisecond. And it's going in the correct direction. Here we see the pitch was slightly dead, but um, the, the amount of oscillations is, is, it's okay. I think it's acceptable here. Y'all look pretty good here, but here it had a little glitch, I would say. It's going in the right direction, and it's it's keeping its position once it gets there. Sometimes it tends to overshoot. I mean, look at the yaw here; it overshot slightly. I do have a couple of the PID controller in different environment. A uh, couple samples we can also take a look at in a bit. So the two million for me is the pretty interesting like sample. I mean, these are all two million uh, steps here. They look pretty good. They look really good. Like it just needs just some like fine tune adjustments here. So I was like, maybe once I hit three million, it's gonna get a lot better. But wrong. I was completely wrong. I was actually surprised. Look at it. It just starts. Look, that's this is a three million. You would think it's one million step. This is three million step, which is one thousand five hundred simulations. It's only five hundred more simulations than the uh, than than the two million. So, yeah, and it's doing worse as you can tell here. And let's let's open up another sample here. Uh, if we take a closer look here, it's look at it. It's way off as you can tell there's not even going there It's not going there. So at 3 million it just started to forget everything or started to I don't know get drunk or just it's just high off of something I don't know what the hell's wrong with it, but here it was just uh, all Just just wrong look at it. Nothing nothing was good like nothing was good on three which is really Kind of strange. I mean look at this. This was good. Okay, but it started off shoot off later on that was a really nice response. No, actually, it wasn't even that nice, to be honest. It's just not good, which is really strange. So something around the 2 million mark 
is pretty decent here and um, I'll be sharing what I'm doing here very soon I'll create these tutorials to have you set up and again unfortunately well, it's not unfortunate you have to learn Linux sometime um, you're gonna need uh, Linux it's because of the current uh, simulator that's being used to simulate this real world it's called gazebo and it's only compatible on Ubuntu unless I haven't seen anything else that's currently compatible but um, you can see if you can find it a way to install it on Windows, but I highly doubt that it's there is a way currently. Um, but yeah, this is um, this is pretty crazy here. The two million mark is, is really good. This is three million again. So check this out. Three million. This is I think one of the best results of the three million. And this is just two million steps, which is one thousand simulations, one thousand five hundred simulations. You can see the difference here. Let's put this actually down there, and you can see here's the PID controller also. I'll hide this here so you can get a better idea. There we go. So 2 million, which is 1,000 simulations. 3 million, 1,500 simulations. And PID controller. Can you see that? So this was, the, the, it was really nice. I'll, the 2 million mark was really nice here. So the, there's also still many things that could be modified, which I'll get into later on. Just easing it in step by step. And anyone who's actually interested will actually go start researching this and will slowly start to understand. And most of the information that I'll be releasing will make a bit more sense to you. Now let's talk about his flight. Let's actually open his flight here. Um, his flight, he said that that last death roll is actually reproducible so something is going on i don't know what he didn't give me much detail but he's saying that he's going to go for another flight and once he goes for another flight then what we can expect him to narrate what he's doing he's actually a good flyer it turns out he was just taking it easy uh we're gonna say neuro flight uh, maiden let's check his channel there we go oh look it's my video already nice okay so this here so it was this video here and let's take a look at the ending here where it's just going to flip in and just flip out that. So that is reproducible. And as you can tell, it's a roll. Boom. Is it a roll? I think it is a roll. Let's see. The rolls. Yeah. I've, that's what I've noticed. Also, it's usually on there. He also had a weird flip a while ago in this video. I don't remember where it was. There it is. That was a pitch kind of. Well, it was a pitch and a roll, but roll I think is having is quite dramatic. And again, this is just theories of mine. He knows better. He, he hasn't given me the full details of this, but this this death flip is uh, reproducible. Now, what it it could also mean one of his motors got hot, you know, from oscillations, kind of like a high D in a way, and it just said that, and it just flipped them out. But it's usually roll here, and if we could try to figure out if it's just one motor, maybe that's going weaker. So if it went weak like that, that would have been, I think, one of the back left motors here. But no, then it flipped the other way. Or did it? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Dissect this. Analyze it. Let me know what you think down in the comment section. So let's talk a little bit about the code here. Uh, Neuroflight. And actually, his papers are very important. His papers, when you first read them, they will barely make any sense to you. You'll think it's like in another language. But um, it's, it's actually not. So here's one of his pieces. I think this is his latest paper. Let me see. It's um, it gets kind of complicated. There's a lot of math in here. The, most of it I still don't understand fully, but the more time I give into it, the more I read it, the more it makes more sense. So it's a very good paper. You should definitely read them. I'll have them also linked down below. And here is he, he's in the latest simulator. He's also ported his five-inch quadcopter into the mix and we can read its specs here so this, these papers are really important to kind of get an idea especially if you're going to be getting involved in this it really does help all right so this graph is pretty interesting now let me explain this graph so he went out flying he recorded all the data while neuroflight was in it doing everything and while he recorded that flight he, he also ported that flight into the simulator and ran the ai in the simulator and it gave us this graph here now let's try to actually zoom in a little bit more so we can get a better idea what's really going on. So the dotted line is where it was supposed to be. The simulator is the this line. I don't know what color. We'll call it orange right now. And then blue is what happened in the real world. As you can tell, the real world is getting amplified. So it was supposed to be here, but it just overshot. And I think these are what we saw in the video. I'm hoping this is the video because it does make sense. Kind of. Does it flip at the end like weird? I can't tell. 
So here we have a roll. So that's correct. There's a roll. Here we had a little overshoot. Here we had another roll, a little overshoot, but everything else is running pretty nice. Yaw spin and split S, a tiny overshoot here. Here on the pitch axes, um, it wasn't, it's not bad. It's not bad. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not that amplified. You just, you just, I just need to soak it in a little bit more here, actually. So the simulator is basically spot on here, kind of, if I can see that correctly. And what do we have here? Should use a different color. Um, it's looking good here in the real world. Something happened. Maybe some. This is the yaw. The yaw's having issues here. This is the real world, as you can tell. It went completely the opposite way where it's supposed to go here, and here, and here. Look at this little dude. The blue is in the real world. So the so something happened here. So it still seems really promising. I mean, you know, when you sit down and just train it for like five, four hours and take it out. And then you find that's the sweet spot and then just start tuning some of the parameters, maybe change the type of algorithm for the, for the AI. Um, yeah, that's pretty crazy. So Jim FC two, I don't know which one I am currently working on. I do believe I still am running on Jim FC V one, but I'm trying, I'm still understanding the, the simulation environment, how to edit it, how to modify it, how to add some things to improve some things. So yeah, I'm just currently waiting on him and hopefully he's watching this video and, uh, I just really can't wait to take it to the next step. So I've done a couple things here. Now, unfortunately, I won't be able to translate or transfer the current trains training data into the uh, the Neuroflight port just yet. I need the uh, the second version in order because here, if you read this, you'll notice that he'll talk about oscillations and uh, pretty bad oscillations, basically that um, uh, will burn your motor. Just just too much of a uh, where is it? Let me see if I could find it here. Anyways, he incorporated a new reward system inside the simulator to avoid it from like a high D environment where it's just constantly trying to fix, you know, very high oscillations that burns out the motor. So yeah, keep that in mind also. So he set that up on the new simulator and uh, a couple other things as well. And uh, we'll go over the code in an upcoming video uh, just when I get a better understanding so I can come in and actually give you uh, some re real juicy info for you to understand. Trying to make things a little bit easier for you. I'm doing all the hard part here. And well... I mean, we've all seen his video. It looks pretty good. Um, the flight wasn't bad at all. Uh, but, you know, time will tell. Hopefully, I can get the exact uh, firmware he flashed here. I've asked for it to, to go out and test it. I'd be really interested in seeing what really happens here and how to reproduce it. Could it be one of the motors actually getting hotter than the others? Or can it be, you know, because anyways, Maybe there is no issue here. Maybe it's something with this quadcopter. I'm not saying it's a bad quadcopter, but you never know. These I've had so many quadcopters. They're just out of nowhere. They'll just start doing something weird, and you just don't know why. Just I think the more people that actually fly this and on different setups, we can get a lot of valuable information. And from understanding his paper here, what he's saying is he's able to take the flight and convert it into the simulator. Now, this is very useful, and let me tell you why. Because if this proves to be really nice and anyone who also wants to support but just doesn't know how to code, flash this firmware and then just send us, send me, put, well, we'll have a place set up where you could send your flights, you know, just on that um, server, just upload them somewhere. And that'll really contribute because if we get just, you know, 100 flights, and it doesn't take much to get 100 flights from people. So you can imagine that's 100 simulations right there. To have something that's working pretty decent, not perfect, not as good as beta flight. But something pretty decent is uh, is is quite sooner than you might think, actually. A lot sooner than you might think. Um, and, yeah, well, that's it, guys. I want to hear what you guys think down in the comments section. Um, I'm really interested to hear what you have to say. And, um, yeah, he'll also be reading the comments. So if you have any questions for him, just uh, write it down there. And uh, he'll be answering you. He did that in the previous video. And uh, it was him flying. And he knows how to fly. And uh, that was my bad. I didn't know because the paper here didn't say that he was flying. I thought that he just said they got somebody to fly. But um, yeah. And well, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. And again, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.